behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make his deeds known among the people of the earth. Proclaim that his name is exalted.
Well, my name is Natalie Hall. And actually, Natalie Palagutas Hall, because my dad is Greek. And I was born in Ukraine, not in Greece. And I was told that I have a talent to my parents. And that was, my parents took me to music school. And I started my studies at age of four. At first it was exciting, and um, then it became boring, but then it became again exciting. And then at age 14, I declared that I want to break my violin because I was sick and tired of it. <laughs> and um, it did not work because what I had in mind was going to be, made him, it, they're going to kill me if I was going to like drop a violin and say it was an accident. So I continued doing it in spite of my um, non-desire to do it not knowing what's gonna happen the rest of my uh, journey. So today, I just wanna talk to you briefly about um, one part of my life where um, the Lord had healed me and saved me from myself. My ministry phrase is, you don't have to measure up to fit in with God. You already fit in with God the way you are. He already taking you the way you are. You don't need to have a formula to be the way you are. You're already there. He just wants you to say yes to him. So in spite of me saying yes to him, I felt like I wanted to live my life the way I wanted to live as a violinist. Um, I brought up in the classical training, therefore there was a, a vision of me, how I should be. I should be playing this way and I should be doing that way and I should be doing the other way. And it really eated me up inside. So to fast forward, I did not know what that feeling was when I started to feel like I am not good enough. I thought maybe it's just because I'm not practicing enough, or maybe I'm not playing the right songs, I'm not playing the right way, and I just, I just thought that that was normal, so I kind of suppressed those feelings, and I did not want it to uh, appear uneducated, so I would practice, even though I hated it because it was just that not good enough always being told that I need to be better. Um, and the feeling just kept on growing and here I am in my 20s and I felt like I am not good enough still. And I'm still studying the violin, I'm still a musician and I'm still doing things. And um, actually it's before the 20s because in my 20s I was already in the United States. Um, the Lord uh, was pursuing me, but I did not know he was pursuing me. I think he wanted me to be accepted by him, but I thought that I had to also measure up to be accepted by him. And I thought I had to be a certain way for him to love me, a certain way to accept me. Um, I needed to talk the way I should talk. I need to play the way I should play so he will love me. And it was just a big turmoil in my heart that I thought it was just, you know, something is wrong with me. So, um, before I continue, and I would like to share with you the video that might be some of you uh, saw already, but it was filmed in Ukraine, and then my story will continue after, after that. It's called Melody of Love because God's love gives hope, but I was very hung up on that I'm not good enough. So I did not hear that God's love gives everything and I don't need to be good enough. I'm already good enough. So let's um, worship the Lord, speak to the Lord as you watch the video and I will play quietly in the background. It was filmed in the city where I grew up and we'll continue the story.
music. Um, still not interested, still feeling like I'm not good enough. So let me fast forward to the part that is very emotional and that is a big part of why my album Living for Jesus is now alive. Um, I've suffered with a depression, suicidal, and I've had mental health problems. All of that came from not sure, but I feel like the buildup of not good enough, you're never going to be good enough, um, jealousy of seeing others doing great things and wondering what's wrong with me, um, resentment, um, people that I like that I would resent them also, I would get upset with God constantly because I wanted to be in the same in that place where I feel like I'm going to be good enough and measure up and he was not giving it to me. So depression was very thick and um, it eat me up alive. And I'm telling you, alive. Um, it's, I was giving a metaphor this weekend to another group of beautiful young lady, uh, ladies. Um, it's like a cloud. You guys know about hurricanes here. And um, the cloud comes in dark, and it kind of lingers over, and you know it's going to be happening something. So after a while, the cloud will go away, right? And a hurricane would pass, but my hurricane never would pass. I'm in my 20s, I'm in my 30s, and it's still that turmoil inside of me, and I feel like I am not good enough, and I wanted to escape. So um, I had, had a plan, right, how to escape. And the depression was telling me how to escape. See, the depression and um, it has a voice, and it's a disgusting voice. It want to crush you, and it wanted to destroy you. And I think the devil and the depression that he was in uh, knew what God wants to do with me. Um, I meet different musicians here and there that they struggle with a very much the same situations that I struggle with, and I meet other people. And guess what? Depression doesn't have an age limit. If you're in the 80s, you probably could be struggling with a depression. And you could be thinking, what's wrong with me? Uh, we all trying to measure up to somebody. We all trying to have a standard towards somebody and feel like you have to be that person. And um, it, it's impossible. So uh, I'm in my 30s, and I am planning my suicidal uh, event. I, know, I should say uh, how I'm going to do it. Um, I was too chicken to kill myself or hang myself, um, so I decided that pills will be the easiest and most effective probably for me because I was too chicken. But um, I remember that day, like right now I'm talking about it and I, I know I'm in the apartment, um, I'm sitting, the voices are just kind of like over me, it's like it's enough and I am done. So I call my husband and I tell him, um, and I'm gonna kill myself. I don't know why I called him. Normally, people don't call before that, and but it's some reason I felt like I need to. Maybe because I was also crying out for help, and I wanted to get some kind of help. And I called him, and he. I felt like he. I just called him, and then he was right there. Um, but I resented him, also because I felt like he stopped me. I called him, but he stopped me. So I don't know why I was still resenting him for it. So even though, um, quote unquote, that he saved me from, from it, but I think God was using him. And if you know of somebody who is suffering with that, why don't you just give him a call? Why don't you just give him a text or send him an email and um, see if you can help him? Because it's really important to reach out to those people. Well. Um, it did not stop there because I continued planning that I'm not going to call him another day and I will just do it again. And um, other people were reaching out, but I did not want to hear anything. Um, until I felt like, okay, I'll, I will go and do what somebody advised me to do, which is take a class. Because I'm going to be really honest with you, I didn't think God loved me. Because how can he love me and I'm in such a misery? And I'm always feeling like I'm a terrible person. 
Um, so I decided that I will go ahead and take this class at the church that I was attending in New York. Um, and that class helped me to see, you know how the onion becomes dirty after a while and you don't use it? So that dirty layers were peeled off of me and you were able to see the good onion that you could use for cooking. And that class helped me to see that God does love me. And I was desperately, desperately wanting to um, be loved by him. I wanted to hear his voice. I wanted to feel him. And the journey started there. So I'm going to pause right here and we'll continue after the, this song. It's called Day by Day. And I felt like day by day I was being a little bit more and more restored. Still broken, still feeling disgusted about myself. But by the day by day it was kind of coming out out of that. So right now I will minister to you with the song Day by Day and we'll continue. Depression will learn how to camouflage that. 
person with this suicidal uh, mental health will learn how to camouflage it. So maybe they will look lively and happy to you and they look like they're put together and they're normal, but they're not normal inside. When you put them in a room by themselves, they're not normal. And, and they feel like they're not normal to themselves. And to you, uh, to a person looking at them, they might think that's okay, but with them, that's not okay. And they feel like they have to continuously perform, continuously perform, and that's what I was doing. I've continuously been performing and performing until the moment where I, when I took that class, I realized that God does love me and I don't have to perform. There's a chapter of that class was on performance, how we like to perform. Boom, as soon as I went through that chapter, I said, that's my, that's a chapter about me, that's a chapter about my life and who came to talk to me, when did I did that, because this is all about me. And that's when the light started coming on. And I think after that, I started to feel the love of God because I realized that I don't have to perform. Not to him, not to my husband, not to anybody who hires me, not anybody who uh, wants me to come play it for an event. I can be myself, and I can be uh, portraying the way God wants me to portray myself, that I am good, and I'm an, enough in front of God's eyes. And that revelation, has to come to a person on themselves. You cannot beat it down to them. You cannot make them think that they have to. You have to be patient with people like that, and especially people who are introverted and suffering with that. You have to be really patient with them. And I thank the Lord that I had a few close people who were close to me, and they were patient with me. And living for Jesus, is basically an exhale of my travel into the city. So the songs were given to me from the Lord. They're old hymns I've never arranged before. I heard every single arrangement in my apartment um, and I reached out and there's a little story behind the living for Jesus. I kind of felt like I have to kind of sort of still be in that Natalie, old Natalie, and kind of decide what I wanted to do. So um, I told the Lord, I told God that the CD will not be called Living for Jesus because nobody will buy it, nobody will listen to it, nobody cares about Jesus. Jesus is not a popular person on this earth. Nobody wants to know about him. And um, as a good Papa God he is, he rebuked, uh, he, he let me do it, of course, but it was a chaos. So I had to scratch the whole recording. I recorded the whole album and I had to scratch it. So um, he helped me to go back and redo it. So when you listen to the songs in that album, it's my prayer to the Lord. And each of them has a special meaning because he gave it, each of them to me. So the title of the CD is called Living for Jesus. Um, I'm no longer living for anybody else, and I'm no longer measuring up to anybody else, and I'm no longer ruled by depression voice, and I'm no longer doing what I think people want me to do, or talk the way people want me to talk, or play the way people want me to play. I'm just being myself, and it's, it's a freedom that only can come from Jesus. I'm taking pills, I've done therapies, nothing helped me. It came to, from him to me. So I choose to live for Jesus, and I choose to continue to live for Jesus, no matter how hard it is. And living in New York City, it's not easy, but he has helped me. And he's opened up the doors for me. And I pray for any one of you that are suffering with depression that you will come and talk to somebody. And if you know of anybody, would you please to reach out to them? Would you please talk to them? Would you please tell them that they're loved and there's nothing wrong with them? Because they think there's something wrong with them. But there's nothing wrong with them. It's just, it's something that a lot of people struggle. It's this insecurity. It's feeling resentment. It's just a whole bunch of things that can make you feel that way. And I just want to bring hope to you all. I am alive, praise God. 
I am uh, able to play, I'm able to touch you with my music, with my instrument, and um, I'm able to give you what the Lord has given me, and I'm able to show you that God is real, and Jesus cares for you, and he is not going to give up on you, even though you think you're going to give up on yourself, he's not going to give up on you, and he wants to reach out to you, and he wants to love you, and he wants to hug on you. And God is just like your dad here on this earth, but better. <laughs> he is, I call him Papa God because it's more intimate. And it's more like inviting him into your life, inviting him into your uh, music or whatever you do, if you are, whatever profession you are. It's just something that he wants to be part of because he created us for our fellowship with him and I wanted to encourage you tonight and I wanted to give you a, a little snippet of my testimony if I come back maybe I'll talk more about different things but it's a very important message I wanted to lay out tonight you are loved you cared for he loves you your depression is is okay you're gonna come out of it you're gonna be fine uh, because God has a big plan for you and he wants to be your friend and be your daddy that you maybe desperately need. And I'm going to um, conclude tonight with the two songs. One is the title track, and it's going to be a video that was shot in, in New York City, and it's on the Living for Jesus. And then right after that, I will play my current single. It's jazzy style and it's called Jesus is all because he is all and all and he's all we need and I thank you for your attention and be blessed by these two songs 